It's been a while since I've been out here with my thoughts. I never imagined how grueling was saving the very remnants of my peaceful life would be. I remember the last time this land was engulfed in flame, when I have had to put myself in danger time and time again, just so that the people in this world would have a fighting chance. They say the eldest is always the wisest, that their age would bring them knowledge. But perhaps I am lacking because I feel myself slowly being pulled into those same memories, only they have become my reality, and they will become everyone else's too. The sanctuary, the gentility of the wind, I can feel it caving in to the darkness, to the chaos. And through it, I can hear my sister's voice. My dear Karma, the youngest one supposed to... <laughs> you were meant to be the kindest one of us. What has overtaken you? Could it have been the loneliness? The barren wasteland of the snow? What is it that is corrupting your heart, Karamu? What do you intend to do? Do you intend to bring suffering to humanity? You've had the power to do that for so long, and you've showed your capability. But for the sake of our mother, we have had to guide you on the right path. Your sisters, my sisters, know that better than anyone, and yet, we cannot seem to teach you a thing. And so it appears that I will have to spread my wings once again and descend upon the human world, away from my family, from my darling husband, to my beautiful daughter Len. I will have to leave them behind, even for, for a few minutes. Even if those minutes turn into days, to weeks, to months, to years. I need to keep them safe. I will protect them from anyone who wants to hurt them. Just as I'm sure you feel about your loved ones, Karama. Tell me, what was it? What was the medicine for your madness? What will bring you back to us, back to your senses? You grow stronger each day, and each visitor you take in, they always leave you behind. Our connection as sisters, it lets us know this day in, day out. I wonder where the others are, if they can hear you too. I... I fear it, what you're capable of. Because if you, I am not careful, you could destroy us, destroy this life. But more than anything, I fear you'll destroy humanity for what you have suffered. I cannot allow that to happen, and so, the day you step out from your wilderness, I will be there to put you down if I must. I will bring you back to your senses, and I will restore you to who you are supposed to be. How I pray that my intuition is wrong. Uh, uh. My darling, um, how long have you been standing there? Oh, heard a good amount, haven't you? Well, 
I can't say I don't expect that from you. You've always been one so adamant about keeping after me, about protecting me when you know that you don't have to. Huh? Len is in bed, isn't she? <laughs> you must forgive me. You've been so occupied with her, and yet it feels like I've hardly done a thing. You must forgive me. I I've been troubled lately. Yes, it's about... I have six sisters. They're all younger than me. Our mother had us, and she scattered us across the earth, meaning to have us as guardians of our supposed grounds, or weapons of destruction should we so will it. We are the higher species over humans, as much as I hate to admit such a fact. As such, we are judge, jury, and executioner. Although there is no God that can tell us to. <sighs> it is a duty I have long shirked. Because I do not want anything to happen to humanity. They are not... <sighs> the actions of a few do not define the many. Just as the many do not define the few. I have had my faith in humanity for thousands of years. But that isn't my concern. My concern is my sister. My youngest one, Karamu. She is the white dragon of the snow. <laughs> I want to say she is the kindest one, but... These days I can feel she is becoming far from it. In truth, Karamu has always been... strange. Even when she was hatched. <laughs> I was there to see it happen because I did not want to leave her alone. She opened her eyes and did not even cry. Not even a single fireball. As would be normal from a baby dragon. <laughs> this did plant the seeds of doubt in my heart. But even so, I loved her. And until she was ready to protect herself, I stayed beside her. But even then, it felt like I wasn't even there. Like she didn't acknowledge me. Other times she would stare directly into my eyes and not look away. It was so... It was troubling to say the least. You see in the snow fields, there are very few a traveler to go past them. Many choose to go around it by the way of the Crimson Sea, but... The brave ones that do, they, they arrive in Karamu's place. They stay for a while and then they'll leave. I know this because I've seen it myself a few times. And I have felt her any time it has happened. And I fear that her loneliness will drive her to an insanity. It sounds so... I feel as though I've felt this happen before, but I don't know if I can protect her, but I know that she will not keep still for any time longer. I must be there for when she comes out. I must be there when she shows her face to humans. I can feel a bubbling rage, a sweltering sadness, a 
drowning despair that has shackled her into the darkness. And I want to break those shackles for her. I want to heal her. I want to protect her. For she is my precious little sister. However, allow me to remind you I have been on the battlefield before, and I have even had to slay some of my own, just so that humanity could have a chance, and just so that I could prove that these people were worth saving, worth protecting, worth blessing. Kanamu will only hurt them all, and then she'll eventually turn on us her own sisters that should not be allowed I am willing to bring Karimu back if I am able to however I am not naive enough to believe that the outcome I wish for will come to be and so I ask this of you my love you must take Len and take her somewhere safe you must find my other sister in the forest, Mirgala. She will bring you salvation and protection. I know she will. In the meanwhile, I will have to descend from this mountain for a while. I do not know how long we'll be apart, but I do ask of you not to worry about me. I might have a lovely face, but I am not frail. I can swing a sword. I can raise a shield. I can shoot a bow. And I can have fire, too. I will be just fine. But I will be even more fine, knowing that you and Len are safe. I will protect you both from anything that would want to hurt you. So please, do it for me.